On September 11th in 2008, seven years um, to the date following historic day 9-11, I woke up from a dream and, and in the dream, I'll, I'll share a bit of it with you. I was standing uh, at the bottom of a hill um, on, on a beach, which in the moment it felt like Hawaii and, uh, or the West Coast and of, of, of North America. And as I looked out onto the ocean, I saw seals jumping out of the water and it was beautiful. And in the same next moment, I looked out, I saw whales jumping out of the water and it was, it was, it was terrifying. And I knew in my mind, a big wave was coming. As far as I could see, there were seals and whales jumping out of the water. The, the sound in the dream turned off and the urgency went up and I turned around to run up to higher ground. And as I began to sprint up this hill, it felt like I had been running for hundreds of meters just without, without, without fatigue. And it felt like there were a thousand people behind me sprinting up the hill. Jenny and I were running side by side. As I encourage her, she runs on ahead. And at the end of the dream, a great loud voice yells out, 60 seconds, end of dream. I wake up and some of you have had these experiences where I just, I, all I could sense was there was a wave coming for the United States of America and it would be like a great shaking. It would be it, this, I, I, I was filled with the sense that I need to cry out for God's mercy for my nation. I fell on my knees, began to cry out to him. As a church staff at the time in Tacoma, Washington, we were in a season of 40 days in prayer and fasting. This is the season that that dream came. And I went to the church office and I sat down very disheveled after having emailed a friend in Texas to help me understand what is God saying through this dream. Next thing you know, my pastor sits down in front of me, Brian Brent, many of you know him, you know, he's the co-founder of the Circuit Riders in Huntington Beach, California, one of our messenger guys. And he sits down in front of me, he says, Adam, this morning Christy and I were in prayer for you and the Lord showed Christy a, a, a clear vision. And in the vision, you were standing on a beach and three foot waves were crashing over you. And the Lord said these waves represented harvest among young people. That's just normal. At the time we were, we were giving ourselves to youth outreach throughout Tacoma. And he says, but the word of the Lord is this, God is stirring the deep waters and there's a big wave coming and it's going to carry his, a historic harvest among the next generation. He prays for me, he lights me up, he leaves. He doesn't even have opportunity to hear what I'd experienced that morning about the big wave dream, the dream that I saw that carried not God's love and blessing and revival like he had seen, but the vision and perspective of God's severity. And uh, next thing you know, I get an email response from my friend in Texas. Here's what he says. He says, Adam, this is a calling dream. And uh, he says, the seals in your dream represent the love of God. That's why they were beautiful to look at. Even as the Song of Solomon says, I've set you as a seal upon my own. He said, but the whales represent the judgments or the shakings of God, God's severe dealings. He says, just ask Jonah about that one. He says, right now there are three foot waves hitting you, but God is stirring the deep waters and there's a big wave coming. He used the same phrase that Brian Brentwood used with me moments before. And he says, and the big wave that's coming, in our nation, the nations of the earth, is going to carry both the love of God, his, his kindness and revival and salvation, as well as God's severity in shakings and in judgments. I was stunned. God, through this interpretation, began to give me understanding as to what he was saying. He was asking me to charge the hill, to run up to higher ground, to get a higher perspective, to have higher, more profound communion with God, to be rooted with Him in, in Scripture and in prayer so that the, the generation after me could enter into this ne next season where God would send a big wave on America and the nations of the earth that would carry both His love and revival and an unprecedented harvest among young people as well as an expression of His severity in the nations or, or times of difficulty and shaking. And I knew that God was asking us and to, 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 he was inviting us in terms of our calling to prepare the church and a generation for those realities when God was drawing near in both his kindness as well as his severity. It was actually about four weeks later where 
you know, we were doing an outreach, youth outreach at a high school campus in Tacoma. And a young lady came up to me. She had been saved six weeks earlier. Her name is Brooke. She'd been healed by God in our meetings. And then she repented of her sin, gave her life to Jesus. She came up to me. She said, I heard you had a, a dream about a big wave. She said, I did too. Can I give it to you? I need to understand it. And as I read the dream, here's what she said. She says, in the dream, I was standing at the bottom of a, of a hill on a beach and three foot wave after three foot wave was crashing over me and it was beautiful. She said, but then I saw seals and whales jumping out of the water and I knew a big wave was coming. She said, so I turned around to run up the hill and there were a thousand people running up the hill. She saw the same dream I had from a different perspective. She said, but it was too late. I was running into the water and I was brought up the face of the wave, this great tsunami, and I was thrown into the water. She said, I was terrified. She said instantly she knew she was in New York and she saw the head of the Statue of Liberty fly past her underwater. She was terrified, but then she heard an audible voice that spoke to her and said, do not fear. I am with you. You can breathe underwater. She said at the time she began to breathe and she knew that God was with her and she knew that she would live. Brooke reached out to me this just two weeks ago. We had chatted over 10 years. She said, Adam, at the time, yeah, she said, uh, excuse me, at this time I live in New York full time. She said, here in New York, in with the COVID-19 virus, she says, the news outlets around here are calling it a tsunami virus that prevents people from being able to breathe. She says, I've, I've recently been diagnosed with, with COVID-19. She says, what do you think God is saying to me? I said, honey, I think God is saying to you, you can breathe underwater. Even in the midst of this difficulty, even in the midst of this, this crisis moment, this shaking, this sense of wilderness, this challenge moment, there is supernatural grace from heaven for you to live and thrive right where you're at. You, you've tasted and known the healing of the Lord and God wants to share that through you to the city around you. A couple months after receiving the big wave dream in January 2010, here's the last part of this story. You need to hear this because there's a promise for each one of us in this next part. I was at a conference in Dayton, Ohio, January of 2010. And some of heroes of mine were at this conference. I had to go and see Lauren Cunningham and I had to go see some of the leaders of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City who were speaking in their seminars. And and while one of my, at the time, preaching heroes, Alan Hood, was speaking, I didn't know him at the, in the moment, but I knew the Lord wanted me to share with him my dream. So I don't know how, but I worked the courage enough to speak to him after the service. And I, I told him I wanted to share a dream with him. And he said, I want to hear everything you have. And he took me into the hallway. And I thought, I thought this is unusual. And I shared with him my dream about the seals and the whales and the wave that was coming that would carry both the, the harvest among the next generation, the love of God and revival, as well as God's severity. And we would have to prepare the church to thrive in both, in, in both contexts. And then I shared with him Brooke's dream. And it ends with, she could breathe underwater. And at that time, Alan began to pace. He began to kind of get a little fidgety. And he says in his southern accent, he says, she could breathe underwater. And he repeated himself again and again and again. And he said, the reason this, this is impacting me so deeply, he says, is this morning, Adam, I woke up from a dream. This morning, I woke up from a dream in which a tsunami wave came over the United States of America. He says, I knew it was a wave of, of judgment or shaking. And I knew I, we needed the mercy of God. He said, and in the dream, God was asking me to jump into the the deep end of the wave and he was he says I'm praying the whole time in this dream God how am I going to survive how am I going to thrive how am I going to fulfill my calling underwater and of course here I am in the same morning telling him you can breathe underwater you know it's it's I feel this is from the Lord for us today you know the church and so many of you know the non-church all around the world we're asking these same questions how are we going to survive how how, how are we going to thrive in, in the midst of this COVID-19 moment? When are we going to re-enter society? What's going to happen with our jobs and the economy and our health? We're asking all these difficult questions because we see the whales that come with the wave that we're in, the shakings that have come. 
But I think there is a prophetic promise, especially for the church, where the voice of God is breaking in. If you can hear it today, the one who has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. He's saying, do not be afraid, for I am with you. And you can breathe underwater. There is supernatural grace for the church to not just survive the wave that we find ourselves in, but to thrive in the midst of it. You see, in every wilderness, there's always manna that falls from heaven. There's always water from the rock. You see, even Elijah, after he prophesied the drought, God directed him to a stream where a raven supernaturally brought him sustenance. And when the stream dried up, God drew him to the house of a widow. But that widow had the blessing of God on her and her jar of oil could not be emptied. Every wilderness is a place to learn and to relearn God as provider, protector, deliverer, defender, and on and on and on. The wilderness, friend, is a place of, of God's unveiling. It's a place where you and I are invited in to, to know God through experience. You see, we can all quote Matthew 4, 4. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. But you know what the wilderness is? The wilderness are seasons of difficulty where we not only learn to quote scripture, but we learn to live scripture. I don't live by bread alone, but by every revelation that proceeds from the mouth of God, the one who's redeemed me. This is a time for the church to come in, to draw near to the Lord who is unveiling himself to us as we experience his, his provision, his generosity, his loving kindness again and again and again. 